Well, the January 6th House Committee voting to refer former President Donald Trump to the Justice Department on four criminal charges, including obstruction, insurrection, and conspiracy to defraud the United States. Now, if convicted on all four, Trump could face up to 40 years in prison and could potentially be barred from running for office again. The Department of Justice will decide whether or not to actually prosecute him. Republican Congresswoman and Committee Vice Chair Liz Cheney delivered this strong rebuke of Trump. It was an utter moral failure and a clear dereliction of duty. Evidence of this can be seen in the testimony of President Trump's own White House counsel and several other White House witnesses. No man who would behave that way at that moment in time can ever serve in any position of authority in our nation again. He is unfit for any office. Joining us now to discuss distinguished university professor at Turo University, the one, the only, Thane Rosenbaum. Hi, Thane. Hi, Katrina. Hi, Rob. Hi. Great to have you with us. All right, uh, let's dive right in here. What was your takeaway? Uh, what really struck you the most from these charges, um, from those final words uttered by that committee? Well, frankly, Kat, Katrina, you know, the uh, words that you just played of Liz Cheney are interesting because when she uses the words moral failure uh, and dereliction of duty, those are not crimes. <laughs> You know, they're not crimes, and that's the problem here. You know, that they've sort of been making an argument that the president may have been, first of all, dereliction of duty applies to the military. It doesn't apply in this context. And a moral failing has to do with the moral universe. It's not a legal issue. So they keep pointing out what they would call, I would argue, negligence of the president. If they have any evidence at all, that's what they have. So in some sense, you know, they haven't done the Justice Department any favors because they loaded up the deck with very severe charges that the evidence really doesn't match up with. Uh, for instance, there isn't really, an, for conspiracy, you have to have an agreement. You have to show some connection between Donald Trump or the White House and the people that stormed the Capitol. There's, there's no evidence of that. There's no evidence of intent here. Again, there's evidence of perhaps neglect, but the, the main themes, also the issue of insurrection, very important for both of you to understand. Insurrection, there's 900 people have been arrested for January 6th. Not a single one was, was charged with insurrection. Only a half dozen were charged with a seditious conspiracy. What happened to even seditious conspiracy? What you see here is they're trying to double up everything on the president, right, on the former mm -hmm. president. It's all him. And Interestingly, the Justice Department, in dealing with the 900 people who were charged, arrested, 400 of whom have already pled guilty or been prosecuted, they've treated Trump as sort of an unindicted co-conspirator. They haven't treated him as the main show. And it's clear that the committee is trying to say to the Justice Department, this isn't about anything else. Remember, they give very short shrift to the law enforcement failures or the intelligence failures. How is that not really discussed? Right. They've decided to load everything up on President Trump. And in this instance, I think if I was Merrick Garland, I would ignore Congress. I would say thanks a lot for thanks for nothing, because, you know, for you, there's no risk. You get to deliver this in prime time and you, your business is done, but, and, th 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 and, th th and now you're giving it to us. Thane, I'm sorry to interrupt, but, but, do, do, but don't you think Merrick Garland and the DOJ is just chomping at the bit uh, to go after Trump? Not for this, hmm. Katrina. I, the, if, of all the cases, I've always thought this was their weakest one. January 6th was weakest. If they, the, the document case is better, the Georgia case, that state criminal trial the, in Fulton County, that's better. The New York uh, financial crimes is better. The January 6th to me was the most difficult for because they keep using the word incitement. But the Supreme Court precedent is very clear. Mm -hmm. The president had a, uh, a First Amendment right to address the people at the ellipse. And his words, actually, which you do not see mentioned yesterday, and it's not in the uh, talk about bad faith, it's not in the report. Soon we will peacefully and patriotically march over to the Capitol and make our voices heard. Notice that never comes up in right. the summary yesterday. That was that sentence alone 
means that there was no incitement under Supreme Court precedent of the First Amendment. All right, so, so Thane, again, Thane, I'm so sorry. We're, Thane, yeah. I, I'm so sorry because you know I could listen to you all day long because I <laughs> learned so much. Uh, but we are out of time, and I, I know that Rob would have loved to chat with you too. But uh, Thane, I think we'll have you back sometime soon, and you can call me Cat anytime. Thanks for joining us. I know I slipped that in there. Is hey, that I right? love it. I, I love it. I did it for your mom. <laughs> <laughs> she calls me Nina or Katie. Oh, all right. <laughs> you can call me that too. All right, thanks, Thane. Thank you both.